Mm. We turn to cricket now. And uh, Hampshire have put together what they're calling a landmark £120 million deal to sell the club to the co-owners of the Indian Premier League, Delhi Capitals. Mm. Um, it's the first, a deal of its kind, possibly won't be the last. Let's speak to uh, seasoned cricket writer from The Sun, John Etheridge. Good afternoon, John. Hello, John. Hi, guys. John, I know money's tight in county cricket, but I'm not sure whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, whether this is the start of a rocky road or the start of a brave new world. I mean, how are you, how are you viewing it? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, uh, Rod Bramsgrove, the Hampshire chairman, says it's going to be the first of many other counties going to invite overseas investments and so on. I mean, most counties are absolutely strapped for cash. A few of them have got a bit of money, the ones who host test matches, but... Uh, most of them really are, are pretty much on the breadline and struggling for money. So um, it, it's an interesting development. I mean, I think Kevin Peterson played a bit of a role, actually, didn't he? He's mm. uh, played previously for Delhi Capitals, who um, the, the, the part owners of Delhi Capitals, uh, the, the company buying Hampshire. And uh, obviously Kevin played for Hampshire as well. So I think he was slightly involved, was, you know, t- trying to sort of um, tell both sides, both parties, that it was a good move. So um, his involvement was a little sort of side note, I suppose. But... Uh, yeah, an interesting development, I think. Hampshire, well, are, sorry, yeah, a, sorry, a successful club as well, aren't they? They're, so you know, they, I think they've won a few limited overs. They've, I think they've got an Ashes Test coming up uh, at some point in the in the future. So they, if if they're struggling, it does make you worry about lots of other clubs as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they've got an Ashes Test for the first time in 2027. The next time the Ashes are played in this country, they finished second in the county championship this season as well, didn't they? So yeah, they've got a pretty decent side, produced some some players over the years as well. Uh, I mean, it's. You know, Hampshire, they've got a, the Hilton Hotel is attached to the, the club as well, the ground, um, also a golf course as well. So yeah, it's, they're not just buying the cricket club, they're buying other things attached to it. At the moment, they're not buying the, the 100, the Southern Brave 100 team, which, um, you know, the ECB are trying to sell off the, the, the 100 teams in the next few weeks and months. Uh, I think they have an interest in the Southern Brave, but at the moment, the deal doesn't include the 100 team. So that's another... Uh, sort of aspect of it as well, but uh, yeah, you're right. So it's uh, counties are struggling, and uh, you know they rely very much on TV money and central funding from the ECB. I think one or two counties, sorry, notably, are pretty self-reliant, but other than that, uh, most of them rely on handouts from uh, from lords. If you want a doomsday scenario, if you look at their bit, their interest in cricket, most of them are in T20 around the world. And you do worry if we had a complete sort of IPL franchise buyout of our counties, they'd be saying. Who wants to watch county championship cricket Ooh. when we can have another T20 another, in there? Yeah, I mean, again, look, that's painting a very uh, sort of bleak picture. But you know what I mean, John? Yeah, I mean, there is still quite a, a sort of hardcore support for county cricket. People enjoy going, you know, it's a bit of a tradition, or a bit of a sort of a cliche, I suppose, with their their flask of coffee and a, and a, and a, and a Tupperware box of sandwiches, you know, and watching county cricket. And, you know, those people can't be ignored. And perhaps they're, you know... Pensioners and people who have retired perhaps with a bit more time in their hands during the week to go and watch county cricket. But they, they are, in some respects, still the lifeblood of the county game and they can't be ignored entirely. So you can't just sweep those people aside and reduce four-day county cricket um, to allow more and more T20 stuff and, uh, and the 100 as well. So it, it's a tricky balance, but obviously money is important and uh, I think the ECB are aware of that and a lot of counties are that. I mean, uh, I think one sort of danger is that... Um, if they, you know, the ECB is trying to sell off the 800 um, franchises, and, and that will bring an instant sort of injection of cash, and it will probably bankroll counties for the next five or ten years. But once that money runs out, what's next? I mean, yeah. there's not much left to sell after yeah. that. So uh, that that's a worry. You know, kind of short term, short term sort of opportunism might um, be a problem when you're looking at the longer the longer picture. And finally, John, we find ourselves in that situation we often do in England to Pakistan, even sometimes when they head to India, that the TV deal has not been done yet. Uh, it always goes to the wire, doesn't it? Or every time there is uh, England sort of find themselves playing in the subcontinent, we get we get this sort of standoff. A deal generally gets done, but at the moment, I don't think it has been, has it? No, it hasn't. I think Sky are probably, probably favourites. Uh, I think the BBC have got um, the radio rights, but... Uh... The England team flying probably just in the air as we speak. They're flying out today. Uh, the first test match is um, next Monday, October the 7th. I mean, there's, there's no rest at all for the players. I mean, seven of the squad who leave today were playing a one-day international in, um, involved. There were five of them were on the field and a couple of others uh, on the subs bench. But they were playing in Bristol 
on Sunday. Marcus Descoffi also, he was the, the caretaker coach for the 50-over team. He flies out today as the uh, as the batting coach for the test team. So there's no rest at all for these guys. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think most people over here would hope that, uh, uh, you know, a, a TV rights deal is is done. I mean, as you say, they, write, they, they wait to the last minute, try and get the best price, don't they? So uh, I suspect... Uh, by the end of the week, we'll know where it's going to be watched mm. and, and Sky is pretty much the favourite. Does it work fantasy. that, John? I've often wondered this. I think, how, how much more do they actually get by taking it to the wire? Because I, I think every time England uh, play in Pakistan, um, this same thing happens, that they really go right to the last... Do they end up getting a quite fantastic deal or does Sky know what they're going to do leading up to it and just sort of um, just wait? Now, I'm not sure of the exact numbers, <laughs> but I think you know, they'll be hopeful that... Uh, that uh, the, P- the PCB, the Pakistan, Pakistan Cricket Board, will run out of options, and uh, yeah. the eleventh hour strike a deal with uh, with Sky. I mean, it's, mm. it's not bad. It's not bad timings. I mean, it's uh, catches a, a bit of a breakfast time market, I suppose. If you've got a, an hour or two at breakfast, I mean, the, the real hardcore enthusiasts might get up at five o'clock in the morning or half four to watch uh, watch the live action. But if you've got an hour to spare between you know seven, eight, and nine o'clock, that sort of time, uh, uh, it's it, 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 they should get a bit of a spike in the audience around that time, I would think. Excellent. Cheers, John. Catch up with you soon. Take care. Cheers. John Etheridge there talking cricket from the sun. And, of course, we'll keep you in touch with those uh, games when they get underway next week. Yeah. Um, what, do, we, do you know what the what the average uh, audience of a, of a county cricket game live is, Paul? Is it, I, is I suppose it, it, it depends on high? the opposition and when it's being played. Yeah. If it's, uh, Feels like it's dying to me. No, I mean, it's, uh, John's right. Of I the mean, game. I, I wasn't saying they should no, just no, 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 chuck no, the baby away like, with the bathroom. How, how do you get people in to watch that when it's on a I work mean, day? You know, it's tough, know isn't if it? It's, sort of, it's a very one-sided, it's day three or four and you know you're going to get beat yeah. and you're at home. You're not going to get... But there are a lot of people who just turn up, a lot yeah. of retirees and, you know... Yeah. Rich people like yourselves with time well, on their hands. Yeah, of course, yeah. Love the time so, um, Ian Dance is going to join us shortly. Uh, we'll be uh, chatting to him. Uh, also, we'll be, and that's looking ahead to the FA on the Championship. So, yeah. Tony Robertson joins us in the next hour. Oh, nice. He's up in North Yorkshire. He'll tell us why. He'll um, sign, I have a cunning plan. Oh, yeah, he would, I wonder right. if he does. We'll ask him. We'll ask him, yeah. He, I bet if they, if they ask what him, does he, to, sign? does he do that? Does he do that? <laughs> he does say on his uh, Twitter feed, no cunning plan. Oh, oh that's So, nice. he, he cannot claim to have one. So anyway, that's all coming up. We're here with our good friends at Tool Station. You can join the brand new loyalty program. Get 5% off every order. 18 plus. T's and C's apply. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.